Hello everyone, we will continue the topic table buffering and in the previous videos we finished with the concept of single record buffering. Now we will move on to our next type of buffering and our next type of buffering is full record buffering and we can use the term simply full buffering also word itself is saying in case of full record buffering the full table records load into the buffer of application layer suppose if a table has 50 records all 50 records will load into the buffer of application layer if a table has 10 records 10 records will load into the buffer of application layer now the next most important question is yes, in which scenarios we should opt for full buffering a table which whose data is frequently accessed and rarely changed we can go for full buffering tables which has that kind of data which is frequently accessed and rarely changed we can go for full buffering once the topic will proceed you will automatically understand why we are saying this now a table which has transaction data we should never never go for full buffering this is the most most important point in terms of full buffering what is transaction data Transaction data is that data which is continuously changing. Suppose if a table has 100 records today, tomorrow it might be 1 lakh. Day after tomorrow it can be 1 crore also because transactions are continuously increasing. Just think if we are going for full buffering, which a, which a full buffering for a table which has transaction data, then what will happen? All those 1 crore records will come into the buffer of application layer and application layer has limited memory. So it will affect the performance drastically. So if a table has transaction data, it's a golden rule. Never, never opt for full buffering. So rather than improving the performance, it will degrade the performance for the whole system itself. So if a table which has frequently accessed data and rarely changed data, yes, at that time we can go for full buffering. Yes, just think about the number of records of the table at that point of time. If a table data is continuously changing, never, never go for full buffering at that point of time. Now, what we will do? We will go for the system and we will see the practical part of full buffering. Now, as of now, for this order header table, we consider as single record buffering. Suppose now we will go for full record buffering here and we will see how the behavior will change. Suppose I will go to technical settings. Now, rather than single record buffering, now I will go for full record buffering and we are going for a consideration that yes, okay, this table has the data which is frequently accessed and rarely changed. So I'm going for full buffering. Previously, single record buffering was there. So whenever I will change the buffering type, so nothing will be there in AL12 now because you change the buffering type itself. So now next thing will be based upon the full buffering. Suppose see. As of now, we have this particular thing in AI12 because single record buffering is there. Suppose I'm going for full record buffering. I'm saving and I'm activating. Never forget to activate the table as the changes will not reflect. 
Now our table has full buffering is activated. If I will show you this summary, refreshed because now because we change the buffering type itself. Now if I will show you buffer content, monitor, buffers, if I will show you buffer content of that table, nothing will be in the buffer because the previous buffer data is based upon single record buffering. So now we change the buffering type itself. Now what we will do? I will run the program now and just you can think, yes, you will see how full buffering will work at that point of time. Now, this is our program. This is our program. Now, in this program, suppose I'm running this program and I'm passing the input based upon order number. This input will go to which particular layer? Database layer. From the database layer, it will fetch the details of that order number. Suppose if I'm passing order number one, so order number one details will come on the application layer. But does it mean that only order number one will go to the buffer? No, full table data will come into the buffer. In case of single record buffering, single record came into the buffer at a time. But in case of full buffering, all table data will come into the buffer at the first time itself. Whatever the input you are passing, based upon that, it will not, this, that input data will be displayed. But whole table data will come into the buffer. It does not mean that whatever the input we are giving, only that input data will go to buffer. No, whole table data will go to the buffer. I'm going for suppose order number one. I'm executing. I'm able to see the details of order number one, but it does not mean that buffer has order number one. Buffer has all the data of order at a table. If I will show you the buffer, you can see all data of the table is in the buffer. Yes, we have these 13 records in the buffer. If I will show you the buff table buffer, buffer, table buffer, single object display. If I will display this, now you can see we have 13 records in the buffer. Now, suppose next time, if I'm passing order number two, so order number two is already in the buffer. If I will show you the contents of the buffer, because full table data is in the buffer. If I will go to monitor, buffer, table buffer, buffer content. If I will go to execute. So whole table data is in the buffer. If I will go to order number two, so this is output is coming from the buffer. The control is not going to database layer. If I will go to order number three, order number three is in the buffer. So it will bring the output from the buffer. Order number four is in the buffer. So there is no need to go to database at all because your whole table data is in the buffer itself. And it, is, it does not mean that whatever the input you are giving, only that data is coming into buffer. Full table data is coming into the buffer. If I will show you the example of SAP table, uh, what SAP table works based upon full buffering. Previously, we saw the example with the help of single record buffering. Now, same example we are viewing now by full buffering. We gave MANDT, we gave CARE ID, we gave COUNT NUM. In case of single record buffering, only the single record came into the buffer. But in case of full buffering, have you seen? All table data came into the buffer. Single record did not came. We passed the key. We passed the three key. Based upon that key, this is the record. But 
all table data is going into the buffer, yes. So this is the extremely important point for full buffering. So what is the summary of this particular video? In this video, we studied that in case of full buffering, full table data will load into the buffer of application layer. Most important point, when to use the full buffering, that data which is frequently accessed and rarely changed, we should go for full buffering. But whenever you are going for full buffering, just think about number of records. If a table has huge amount of data, we should never go for full buffering because all that data will come into the buffer of application layer and application layer has limited memory. So if a table has transaction data, never, never opt for the full buffering. Then what we did, we passed the order number, whole data of that table came into the buffer of the application layer. And next time, whatever the input we are giving, the result is coming from the buffer because whole table data is in the buffer. Now, in the next video, we will more, we will explore more the full buffering and then we will come on to the advantage and disadvantage of full buffering. So that's it in this particular video. Thank you.